Thank you. I think I'm uh, the last presenter today, so I just want to do a quick shout out to Aaron Waltz for putting this audio track on and doing such a great job. So as Aaron said, my name is Greg Ron, and I'm the audio director at Kabam. Kabam's right here in the city. How many people have played Kabam games or are familiar with Kabam games? Pretty much everybody. Okay. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you, kind of give you a little look inside of what, the, uh, what we're doing with the audio department in Kabam these days. And uh, we'll take a look at the, the Kabam as a company, give you a little bit of background on that, and tell you who exactly the audio team provides for. And uh, we'll take a look at our development processes, and I'm going to share with you some of our challenges and some of the hurdles that we've run into. So uh, let's start this thing off by just kind of defining what central services is. It's also known as shared services. Uh, shared services is the provision of a service by one part of an organization or group where that service had previously been found in more than one part of the organization or group. And that part is so true because when I first uh, joined Kabam, there were like several different independent companies all under one roof. And I'll get into more on that later. Um, Here's a shot of our uh, kabam.com website. This is where the players go. This is the portal to get to the games. Um, I think one of the best ways to uh, introduce you to uh, Kabam is talk about Kingdoms of Camelot. Back in 2009, uh, they released Kingdoms of Camelot on Facebook, and it became a big hit really fast. Um, and it didn't have any sound. It was just a game with no sound. And Aaron's looking at me like, what are you talking about, Greg? This is the audio track. The game with no sound, that's down the hall. Um, but I point that out just to show the humble beginnings of this company because, you know, everybody starts somewhere and they, they started with, I think, just a few people, a few of the founders up in a little office above a coffee shop and they made this game and uh, it all went from there. Um, after Kingdoms of Camelot, they made several games. One which is notable is uh, Dragons of Atlantis. And the reason this is notable is that what they did was they bought Wonder Hill, which is a company who made the game, at the time they bought it, it was a million dollar a year game. And Kabam expanded on it, and it became a hundred million dollar a year franchise for Kabam. And this game had sound. <laughs> Fast forward a little bit later that year, they did a, uh, a, a, a mobile version of Kingdoms of Camelot called Kingdoms of Camelot Battle for the North. Um, this game uh, was the top grossing app of 2012, and I believe it's a $250 million franchise for Kabam now. And this one also has sound. So then Kabam expanded a little bit and decided to get some uh, Hollywood IPs, so we did a Hobbit game and um, some other uh, Hollywood franchises as well. And that's going well. This one I think is a $100 million franchise for Kabam. And what do you think it has? It has sound. So I keep talking about sound and the direct cor correlation between sound and money. <laughs> so you can tell them at a social gaming company. Um, do you think there is a direct correlation between sound and money? Anybody? Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you mean a direct correlation between the sound existing in a game or do you mean like um, better sound meaning better, uh, better revenue? That's an excellent question. Uh, you know, being at a data-driven company, there would have to be data points around that for me to, to elaborate on it. But I'll give you my theory on that. Um, but first, I think we need to have a little speed round trivia. And this is a good time for this. Um, my speed round music isn't going to play for us today, unfortunately. But imagine it in your heads, if you will. So here's the trivia question. What, who said this famous quote? Sound is 50% of the movie-going experience. Lucas? Was it George Lucas? Or was it Francis Ford Coppola? Or was it Steven Spielberg? We got most, oh, we got, I hear Spielberg, I hear Lucas. The answer is... It's all three. If you poke around on the internet like I did last night, you can find references that each one of these guys said the same thing. Somebody was the first. Somebody was probably the first, but the cool thing about this point in this super cool slide is because that's an awesome thing, no matter how you slice it, no matter who said it, 
and uh, it's, uh, I believe it to be the truth. So I'm going to go with that. Um, so here's, does great sound mean players will spend money? Here's what I think. I think sound equals immersion, right? If you have good sound in a game, the player's going to get more immersed. If they're more immersed, that equals retention. They're going to stay around and play longer. And if they stay, they tend to pay. <laughs> Cha-ching. Yeah, Aaron, where's that cha-ching sound effect? <laughs> So here's, here's what our corporate communications people gave me uh, as a uh, kind of an explanation of what Kabam actually does. And I think this is great because it's, it's pretty much the definition of any successful social gaming company. Kabam merges the art of game design and the science of consumer behavior to create immersive games. Does that make sense? Does that sound real? Does that ring true for any, any free-to-play game? It merges the art of game design and the science of consumer behavior. I think that's pretty much what we're doing at social game companies. Um, so there's four ways that Kabam generates content. The internal IP, which I covered a little bit. License IP, which uh, I covered. There's acquisitions. Kabam has bought several companies that have successful games and merged them into Kabam. Um, and then there's third-party publishing. And that's where Kabam partners with uh, leading third-party developers all over the world and westernizes their successful games so they're successful in the West. So now into the way things work with audio in Kabam. You got a good picture of what the company does and how they work and what's important to them. Um, so this is what it looked like when I first showed up at Kabam in 2011. Uh, game Team 1, they would have their own design, their own engineering art, and outsource their sound. Then Game Team 2 would do the same thing all outsourcing to different people, all kind of developing games in parallel with not a whole lot of sharing going on in, you know, between the teams. So fast forward to today, Kabam has over a thousand employees and uh, we're all over the world. Um, when I first started contracting for Kabam, there was 45 people in Redwood City. And that was you know, like 2010. So they've been growing pretty fast. Um, and I told them if they ever got big enough and they wanted internal audio, let me know. So they did. So here's, let's go back to the beginning real quick. Here's how it looked. You can see there were three of us in the audio department. And we were all working very hard. Four if you count the audio director, but I was kind of resistant to direction, so I didn't really uh, work very well with the audio director myself. <laughs> and uh, our implementation was very primitive. Uh, we did what I like to call the mindless music looping, where you drop in a 30-second music loop and you let it rip forever until the player just gets sick and tired of it and turns it off and mutes all the sound. Um, we were still throwing sounds over the fence when I first got there, which anybody who's a contractor in audio knows what this means, right? You're basically, they give, the client gives you a list, here's the sounds we want, make these sounds for us and send them to us and we're gonna implement them however we think works the best, and, or maybe not. And thank you very much, here's your check. So you never know really what you're gonna get when you do that, but unfortunately that was the reality of working in social games back at the time. There was no middleware, there was no way for an audio person to get in and do the implementation, so we had to rely on the engineers from the game team, and they had, their queues were already so full, they barely had time to do all the tasks they had, so it wasn't the greatest. So Kabam now looks like this. We have the audio department in the center, and then various game teams around that we all service. They come to us with their game needs, and we provide all the sound for them. We have third-party par publishing team, and we help with audio as well. Um, and then we have marketing teams. And it's really a lot bigger than this, but this is what I could fit in the slide and make it look kind of balanced. So there's, there's several games always going on in parallel, and. Um, at the same time, uh, and the audio teams, you know, kind of splitting our work, trying to service the whole company. So here's what our uh, production currently looks like. We'll, we'll create assets, we'll use middleware to implement, then we'll do a, a ton of testing, because we can. We're right there in the game, we run the build, we can change sounds, swap them out, change their levels, reauthor them, bring them back in, and we just continue this cycle until we get it to a point where we think it's really great, and then we upload it to the game team, and we say, hey, check it out. What do you think? 
and then uh, you know that cycle goes from there. So here's a little org chart of the current audio uh, team, how it looks. Uh, notice we have internal sound designers, and we now have an audio programmer as well. And that's really important because, as I mentioned earlier, the game team engineers are so busy with all the game team tasks the audio programmer is dedicated to the audio team and all the audio tasks. So that really helps with production. And then, of course, we've got a project manager, and uh, then we have external resources that we use as well. So this little graph kind of shows what uh, a different view of what we serve. So we, we service pre-launch games before they launch. We have some pre-launch game support that we offer. We also support the live games after they launch because they're constantly updating. And then, of course, the marketing teams. So pre-launch game support, um, we'll, we'll give them placeholder audio for their very early builds. Um, we'll collaborate with them on the audio manifest. That's the sound, that's the, basically the sound list of every sound that needs to be uh, created for the game. We'll talk about audio implementation, what middleware we're gonna use, how we're going to do it, who's going to do what, and what that pipeline's going to look like. Then once a game goes live, they're constantly doing updates. They run campaigns uh, for all the players. And um, um, I, I heard a session earlier today where they were talking about uh, how important it is to the community that the game is being updated and looked at and, and improved all the time. They expect stuff to happen daily. So you have the whole consumer group, the whole community group help to make sure that happens. And that's why we have so many updates. Of course, there's always holiday packs as well at the holiday time. And then uh, mar marketing support, they have trailers and commercials that they do and we help with those as well. So some of the production challenges we've run into, um, I think top of my head is, of course, China because that's the most challenging as far as time difference goes. There is a little bit of a language barrier with the China teams as well, although most people in China speak English as well. And it's actually not so much a barrier. Uh, they choose their words so carefully and they work so passionately at communicating their ideas that it's really endearing to read their emails and, and see how they've structured the words in ways that we don't and to get their ideas across. So that's, that's kind of a nice way to work. Um, another production challenge we run into is the fact that the uh, recording studio was built next to the gym. Now remember, this is a company, remember the first slide, they had their first game that didn't have any sound in it. So, not entirely surprising. I'm not going to diss our facilities guys, they're great guys, but that, that wasn't the best decision. So, they're working with us, you know, they'll schedule, they'll close the gym when we have recording sessions. So there are workarounds. Um, uh, 1,124 sounds broken and relinked in one day. This was one of my sound designers who was very, what's the word, industrious. And he's always looking for better ways to implement audio and faster ways to work in the middleware. So we were doing this feature uh, involving dynamic loading of sounds. And he discovered that if you globally uncheck dyna dynamic loading of sounds um, and one sound is different, has a different setting than the others, what it, the, the software will do is just unlink every single sound in the entire game. And there's no undo for that. So he discovered this <laughs> on his own and then proceeded to fix it. And he did it all in one day. And at the end of the day, he came and told me what happened. <laughs> and I thought, this, this guy is so cool, you know, because he comes to the manager without a problem. He creates the problem, solves the problem, and then comes and tells me what he did. So that was fun. Uh, the wonders of Git. Has anybody used Git in this room? OK, yes, Git. Isn't it lovely? So um, the China teams prefer using Git. Uh, our, our internal San Francisco teams are using Perforce, which is working much better, but Git is the China thing of choice for some reason. And we, every time we sync up with a new game team, 
we have to do the whole thing, get access to their repository. We have to do all the Git settings. And being that we're not programmers and looking at Git, you kind of have to be somewhat of a familiar with programming and with that language to really get around on your own. Um, it just started feeling like every time we would go to the next game team, I'm like, okay, we got this now. We're going to be able, this, is, this one's going to go smooth. And it doesn't. And we spend days working out how to get this Git communication thing happening. And um, I tried to get them to change the perforce, but it's not happening yet. So for now, it's still the wonderful world of Git. So some of the engineering challenges we've had, um, implementation is always the challenge. Who does what? Even though you we're using middleware, there's the initial setup. You have to set it up. And that involves game team engineers. Um, and they're full of tasks, right? So getting them to do the initial setup has always been a challenge. Once we get that up and running, then we're off and running and we're autonomous and we can just iterate and iterate and everything's peachy. But until we get to that point, it's, it's a definitely a challenge. So then we go along working away, creating all this, what we think is great audio and tons of it. And uh, it comes time to ship, it's getting close to ship time. And we hear, uh-oh, Audio broke the game. This thing won't even load on a low-end device because there's so much audio in this game. So we don't like to hear that. So we naturally are working on lots of ways to optimize audio. There's lots of ways to, to optimize the initial footprint that goes down, the memory usage. We're exploring um, um, various techniques in Unity to load only the assets that you need for a given scene as opposed to loading everything in the whole game. Um, and that also helps with um, uh, the initial download time because we can load a small amount first and, uh, and then add stuff later over the air. Other challenges, I think we talked about this before and Corby talked about this a lot, the small speakers, the size of your nostrils <laughs> that all these games have to play through and uh, that's been a challenge. And um, no, they're not all the same. And it's good to know that because they each impart their own characteristics to the sound. The Horn from Hell, that was the story I told earlier where the game team was testing and they just kept complaining about this French horn in one of our pieces and they just demanded it to be changed and we're saying, no, it doesn't need to be changed. It's perfect. It's right there in the mix. And until we finally heard it on an iPod, which is what they were listening on, we, we didn't hear it. And once we heard it on the iPod, it was just jumping out. So... That was a very uh, educational experience for us. Um, and then, of course, the fact that these, all these devices ship with earbuds, that's a, a, an important consideration for audio on all devices. So that's pretty much it. I've got a few parting thoughts for you. Um, social gaming is poised for a serious boom right now. The free-to-play gaming industry are on track to double by 2018, and that's, that's really exciting. Almost 80% of all revenue on Apple's App Store and Google Play is from mobile games. So that's primarily where Kabam's work is now is in mobile. We still have a st few things on web, but uh, most of it's mobile for all these good reasons. And of course, all of these games need sound, right? They all need sound. Horns from hell, all around. <laughs> So that's it. Thanks very much for listening, and um, enjoy the conference. Hey, can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely. You mentioned um, the publishing uh, of the label, that you had a, a label. What could, can you tell us a bit more about that? Like, what are oh, the... Oh, Kabam Tunes? Yeah. Yeah, I set that up in 2011, uh, and what we did was, since our games have very little sound as far as, you know, doing a whole soundtrack, I set them up as a bunch of EPs. So they're available on iTunes, Amazon, and everywhere as EPs um, for you know game fans who want to want to buy the soundtracks. So they're all high res, and um, yeah, that's our label. Sales are um, less than enthusiastic, to be honest. Yeah, and I think uh, I think I've heard other companies have the same problem. EA had EA songs had the same problem. There's just Popcat got the same thing, yeah. And um, 
Yeah, it's 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 uh, gamer seemed maybe maybe the audio in the game is enough for him. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's there for the ones who want it. Yeah. If you could save Microphone? the next question for the Q and A, we're doing that next. So, yeah. Stay tuned for the Q and A. <laughs> 